today is just um uh well i'm going to show you how i draw support and resistance zones well not, not exactly how i draw support and resistance areas but how do i find key zones where price uh, might uh, reverse and or continue uh, its trend so for example let's start with uh, what happened today in gold i don't know if you guys trade gold or watch gold on a daily basis but uh it's a good way to start this webinar because uh if you don't already know uh gold was trading let me just get rid of this uh market profile right here all right so gold was trading uh right here around the 1282 level now why does is the 1282 level so important in gold well the 1282 level is very important in gold because it's uh the yearly open so uh gold open uh, in january the 31st at around uh, at around 1282 not only that but you can see that we have a, f a congestion zone right here so the first thing you need to understand is that uh, i mean i do have a lot of zones marked in my chart and i'm going to get to that in just a minute but the first thing you need to do is look at where price is heading all right you need to have a bias in this case we have gold in this uh with this chart and uh, we're starting to watch gold around uh, around these levels okay now if we start to watch uh, watch uh, uh, gold around these levels, we're going to see that right here. Let me just grab my uh, rectangle uh, so I can uh, uh, show you the areas that I'm talking about, geometric shapes, and here's my rectangle. So right here is the zone that I'm talking about. Okay, we have a congestion zone. What does what does this mean? Well, this is this is exactly what what you think it means, right? Uh, well, after a uh, um, uh, a very sharp move in price action, just like we have right here from the highs at around twelve forty four, uh, then we have some so, uh, a continuation pattern and, and a continuation of the move down until we have a reversal, right? And this is what we're looking at. And uh, after a, a big move. Uh, uh, to either the downside, in this case, of course, was a move to the downside. We have a congestion zone, and this is where buyers and where you can see it. Let me just, I think, I'm uh, this is too bright because we can't. Um, um, let me just uh, adjust it right here exactly. So that's the border. Uh, I need to adjust, adjust the background that's perfect okay so basically what you can see and just basing yourself in price action and when i when i'm when i'm talking about basing yourself in price action i'm just tell, telling you to look at your candles all right look at your candles what happened here well we have a sharp decline in the price of gold uh from 1318 at this level right here uh to uh, 1282 which is the yearly open. If you didn't know that 1282 was the yearly open, well, um, you need to understand that the yearly open and the weekly open levels can also act as port and resistance, okay? And the yearly open in this case is very important. Why? Because here is where buyers were positioned. And how can you tell where buyers were positioned? Well, that's easy because after a sharp drop like this, um, well, sellers weren't unable to break with that 1282 level. They tried. Uh, they tried a couple of times, but as you can see we have huge um, uh, rejection candles. We have big rejection candles, and the rejection candle you can uh, we well, can easily spot it by by having a big wick to the side of the trend. For example, here we have two uh, candles which uh, with uh, uh, the wick. Above, above uh, below the 1282 level that means that sellers try to break with that 1282 level but buyers were found up and the last time that and and actually i'm going to zoom in a lot here guys because uh this is very interesting all right okay this is very very interesting right here this candle right here let me point out this candle with a uh, with a nice um, arrow all right this candle right here 
okay this candle right here is a very interesting candle why because we we still have some bearish pressure from all the bears that were selling from the from the highs uh and uh, uh this candle tells us something this candle tells us that uh bears push price all the way to the 1280 uh to the 1281 level but here buyers completely overcame bears and uh, not only they push price all the way up to the 1287 level but this candle closed at the 1286.50 level which means that right here you can say uh, you can tell that support was found and price was about to move up now uh, how to trade support and resistance is going to be in my next webinar all right but this is an example of how, how to find a true zone of support big round psychological number yearly open and big big rejection to the upside now this gives us a reversal now what are we going to do with these levels okay now let's teleport ourselves back to a retest of this level again we have this big uh, uh bullish candle let me point it out this bullish candle right here oops i'm sorry this bullish candle should be right here all right this bullish candle right here what happened okay again we have a retest of the level. Sellers tries to push price down. Bulls were found. And then uh, this candle closed at the 1289 level. So that means again rejection, again a good zone of support. And price moved all the way to the 1230 level. So we have found right here a great level of support that today was broken. And this was a very, and actually, you know what? Let's talk about how to trade and not to trade and how not to trade support and resistance levels, okay? When you find, for example, right here, let's talk about how to trade this zone, zone of support. You, we, uh, we already saw that we had a reaction here. We draw a line, then we saw this bullish candle. How are we going to trade this zone of support? Well, that's uh, pretty easy. The zone of support, uh, you are going to trade it when we break with these highs. Why? Because for a reversal to be in play, you need, I mean, you need a break of the previous highs in this case. If we were trading to the downside, you would need, a, um, I mean, if the reversal was to the downside, you would need a break of the previous lows. And there's usually kind of a, a kind of a, of a structure right here. And you're going to go to place, uh, uh your your buy stops above this high and i'm going to put the 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 um uh the up part of my rectangle right at the level that you that you need so we're breaking with this uh, trend line and we're breaking with uh the previous highs so basically uh we can uh, know for sure that uh, we are going to be moving up okay now of course that if you trade momentum you're going to want to um, to take off your position after a a few candles and you're going to put your stops above the pre above the lows above the, the rejection at the level but what about uh trading uh, uh, uh swings all right now if you're going to trade swings you're going to be using uh levels of support and resistance to get in and out now for example this level i'm going to color it uh just uh, so visually uh, we can differentiate each level from each other, all right? I'm going to color it, I don't know, that's purple, I think, or magenta, whatever. No, I think, yeah, that's fine. So I colored this level right here because of this high. Uh, I mean, I didn't use it uh, to get out of the long position. I don't even remember if I trade this uh, this long position, but I mean, uh, this, uh, this uh, level, the 12, 1209.60 level, um was drawn or i drew it in my chart after the fact what does it mean i drew it after we had this rejection of the level and the drop down all right so i drew it because i knew that it was this was an important level and as you can see here we tested we rejected it and then we moved to the upside 
uh, with big momentum, were with a big bullish momentum. But I mean, let's let's say let's. I'm going to get. I'm I'm, I'm going to delete this uh, this level and the level above it. All right. I'm going to delete both levels because what we're going to do is we are going to find the next level of resistance for our trade. Okay. Let's say that we took this long position. All right. And uh, we are right here. We don't know what's going to happen because no one has a crystal uh, ball that knows. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, that. Um, uh, and knows what's going to happen with future auction because remember the financial markets are just a uh, big big auction okay so we don't know what's going to happen so but because i mean it's so difficult i mean trading it's it's a difficult endeavor i i, I know you agree with me and uh, mastering this kind of setups is also very difficult and the profiting from the markets is very difficult and keeping those profits is also very difficult so so you need to not only learn how to enter the trades, but how to scale out of them, how to take profits. Because, uh, I mean, uh, it's it's illogical to get in on a good position, get in on a good trade, and just try to let that trade run uh, because you think that it's going to, uh, I mean, test the previous highs at 12.46. If you had left that trade right uh, because you thought, I mean, uh, yeah, this level, I mean, uh, this this push uh, to uh, the upside is so strong that it's going to hit the 1244, 1245, 1245 level. Well, guess what? You would have, you would have all this money and then you, you would have erased it and got in out at a loss. All right. So we need to uh, learn how to use support and resistance levels to determine where we're going to be scaling in and out so yeah that's great because uh, i have uh, i mean we have just changed the entire um theme of this webinar not only we are going to be learning how to draw support and resistance levels but we are also going to be learning how to use it to scale in and out of the market so let's continue and let's give us a round of applause because that's awesome in my mind <laughs> and uh, uh let's continue and i'm sorry about that yep uh and let's uh, try to see what what's going to happen so yeah we took this this long trade right here and we are looking for previous zones of support and resistance uh, or previous bases, I call them bases, where price might uh, reverse. All right, we are still. I mean, let's let's find it first. All right, let's find it first. So let's use array, and as you can see right here, this is a very good base. Okay, this is a very good historical base. So we're going to start right here. This is a very good historical base. Why this is a very good historical base? Because as you can see here, uh, it was rejected, tested, then we broke with it, and we retested before going higher. Then we retested it again. Buyers were placed here because guess what? We have those rejection candles, and then we broke to the downside. And then again and again, we started to trade above, uh, uh, I mean, around that, that uh, level of, um, in this case, support now it should be resistance all right so not only that i mean uh, this is a very good le historic level that where where profit taken will be i mean will take place and where sellers might be positioned all right because let's uh i mean let's remember that we are in a very strong move to the downside and we are trading a reversal so if we don't break uh with this level to the upside well guess what we are still in a down move, okay? But there's only to be made to, to the upside, all right? But that level is very far, I mean, it's very far from our entry. Our entry is at 1288.85, and that level is the tw uh, the 1310, or the it's, it's actually the 1312. Now, if you look closely, round numbers, not only in gold, but, uh, I mean, in a almost... Um, uh, so 1211 in in almost all asset classes uh, or products uh round numbers 
act as psychological support and resistance okay so basically uh this is uh, i mean and you and you saw right now that uh, i didn't look for the 1311 uh, uh round number level i just drew my line and then i checked and we were at the and uh i mean the, the level that i drew my line at was the um the uh, 13 uh 10 93 level i think i don't know so we rounded it up and uh, there, here is a good level to take uh to take uh profits off of a trade and if you i mean if you i, I mean and not only scale out i would have actually taken all of my trade right there because uh, we we hit right there let me see i think we hit a uh, one two three risk to reward scenario let's see so here we have the long position and the target right here and our stop loss would have been right here so yeah almost a two to uh uh, uh 2.5 risk to reward scenario which is awesome i mean uh, if we lose five fifty percent of the times in this exact same setup we are going to be printing money in the long run and you and uh, you you already remember that uh trading is all about mathematics and probabilities all right okay it's not about knowing where price is going to go it's about starting your past um um your past uh, uh setups and knowing which ones are more profitable than the other ones so basically here i would have taken all my position out all right this would have been my ultimate target so where would have been the first level to take profits okay let's go back okay let's go back and let's go down and let's have a look at what happened here boom so here here was a, another good level of um, of uh, support well this was resistance then we broke to the upside we tested a support once twice three times so this would have been the first level for me to take uh profits and then the second level the 13 11. okay so yeah some of you will will argue that we didn't quite get there with this momentum trade to the upside but yeah sometimes uh, those levels can fail and uh, you can also go back a bit and use this base which i think is the level that we were talking about so the here are three levels that could have been used to take profits all right so this would have been the first one this base right here i mean this level of resistance uh, remember that resistance and support levels are zones they're not actual lines so all of this all of this is considered a level of resistance all right we draw the line we draw the line for visual aid okay and uh, for visual aid only you need to understand that i mean this is an area not a strict line so if we go back here uh you can see that momentum traders got out at this level all right at this level of previous resistance then support before moving to the upside and then uh, and then we had a um a um pullback to the previous highs to the previous base almost the previous base and this is what happens i mean guys after the momentum breakout of uh, some of my um um positions not position for or setups we have a uh, uh, momentum traders taking profit at the at the next level or at the next big level of uh, of support or resistance then we have a pullback and then we have a retest after the retest i would have moved my stops at break even because i mean if uh, uh, if well i would have moved my stops at break even after taking half of the position off right and uh, we would we would we wouldn't have been uh, um, stopped out at break even on the second part of our position, but uh, the move to break even uh, you have to do it because if buyers fail to break above this, I mean the the previous level of take of profit take is going to crash in this case, of course, and uh, you have to manage your trade accordingly. So I would have taken another another part of my position here because you don't know what's going to happen guys and that that's the thing all all, all you need to base your decisions on are these important levels all right and 
but but uh, what we're going to uh, I mean I'm going to attack this um, uh, later. Uh, don't overwhelm your uh, your charts with levels. All right, don't overwhelm them with levels. Okay. Uh, this is why uh, whenever, uh, for example, on this trade, whenever uh, I, I have viewed this level, I just get rid of it. All right. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm just focusing on the next level. So break to the upside, focusing on this level. When we break to the upside, I'm focusing on this level. And I will have taken my, my, uh, my, my uh, all my trade all, all the way up here. So this is uh, because, I mean, uh, because what happens is that after after these levels are break are, are broken with, I mean, they're not that strong. All right, because new levels are, are formed. Okay, now I'm talking about the levels where you are going to be taking profit from. All right, now let's uh, let's uh, delete this one too. And I'm not talking levels like the 1282 level. Now, 12 uh, the levels like the 1282 level are le are levels where you're going to be reversing, our price is going to be reversing, or uh, there's going to be massive auction going on. So uh, let's have a look at the DXY, for example, and the, the levels that I have uh, on this chart, which are also very important. Now, uh, let's go to the daily chart and uh, let's have a look at what happens on the daily chart. Now, if you, if you look, this is the DXY, this is the US dollar currency index. And if you see here, uh, well, we have that level, the 9711, all right? That have been, have, has been tested quite a while, quite, uh, uh like three times in the past uh six months i think so i drew it in red why because this is the level to break or take uh to make it or break it in the us dollar that's right i mean if we don't break with this level uh and it's very likely that because of past price action right here you can see that uh i mean uh, the the move to the upside was very very strong all right let, let's just thicken this out right here all right, let me just grab the uh, arrow uh, right here, right? Boom. Right here, the level to, I mean, uh, the move to the upside was very strong. Those are four daily candles to the upside. And what happened once it hit the 97.70 level, boom. Uh, bears were found. And then again, we tested it and we have a huge rejection week or rejection candle right here okay always look for levels i mean to draw specific levels of support and resistance not specific but strong levels of support and resistance always look for rejection candles and always look look for um for uh price action or or, or big big reversals in price action after uh big moves on the, uh, to the opposite side just like in this case we have a huge bullish momentum to the upside and then boom a bearish engulfing daily candle this is this is a uh, very uh, i mean uh, uh, this tells you a lot on what's going on in the market okay this tells you that right here is is a place i'm sorry a place where sellers or big big sellers are positioned okay and it's going to be very hard to break to the upside and that's the whole point of uh that's the whole point of using support and resistance zones okay that's the entire point of using support and resistance areas is to know where price is going to stop and where price is going to have trouble uh breaking above or below okay Thus, I mean, not thus, uh, but uh, and um, uh, when you uh, uh, when you this, I mean, when you draw these levels on your charts visually, you're going to, I mean, you're going to know where uh, where to take profit if you are on a trade, or where to look for a uh, reversal or a uh, continuation if you're not on a trade, and of course, uh, you're going to also know if a position or a setup that is in your eyes right now is worth taking because of the next level of support or resistance. Now, for example, let's take a look at what's going on on the DXY, okay? Now, the DXY is moving up right here. Let me 
just point it out. If we start looking at the DXY from this from this area for the from the 261.8, okay, at the 95.30 level, boom, we move to the downside, huge bullish rejection. But why? Because right here we had a previous area where bulls were positioned. So we knew not that uh, we knew that uh, not only that, but I mean, uh, there, this is some uh, bearish targets, but that doesn't matter. But no, uh, we knew that price was very likely to reverse at this level, and it did. It reversed at this level, and now it's uh, trading inside of a pennant uh, that currently is about to break. Now let's say that uh, this is something. I mean, let's say that uh, this is. A, I don't know, a future contract or a stock that you trade. And you want to trade, you want to take this, uh, this uh, bullish continuation move. And let's say that you don't trade aggressively, you trade like me. I don't have an aggressive style. I always look for confirmation of my trades because I hate to get stopped out uh, on a loss. All right. I know that, uh, and I know that trading aggressively. Uh, gives you better risk to reward scenarios, but it also gives you much more losers, which can affect you psychologically. So it, let's say that you don't trade aggressively like me and that you're going to wait for the break of the previous high and the structure, all right? And of course, you're going to position your stop losses uh, below the previous low. And because we have such an important level above us, we are going to take profit at that level. Why? Because we don't know. We don't know if to break with the 9770 level. And that's the thing about big levels of support or resistance. We don't know uh, if they're going to be broken with, or if we going, or, or if we are going to get um, uh, a breakout. Right. We don't know. So we must take profit at those levels. At least half of your position. Right. And what happens here is that we have a one-to-one -one risk to reward scenario. In my case, I don't trade one-to-ones. Uh, the the uh, the le I mean, uh, I always look at least a uh, two-to-one, a one-to-two. I'm sorry, risk to reward scenario to trade. So because this uh, this level of uh, resistance is so close to my entry, this is not a trade that I'm going to uh, that I'm willing to take. All right. And the and the having I mean and knowing which levels support and resistance are the biggest or where you're going to find the the hardest let's say the hardest support or the harder resistance uh, helps you in your trading decisions too, okay? And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, write them on the uh, just type them. I'm sorry on the chat, and I'm more than happy to uh, help you out with any query yet queries that you have so basically this is it guys i mean uh, let's let's get the the euro usd all right now the euro us dollar another example of a big level of support and resistance that we have played on the premium uh forex channel all right now if you don't uh, uh, i mean if you don't uh, if you're not a premium member of tradingmo i'm going to give you a one on trial for premium services so you can hold on. Yeah, a one month trial of our services. So you can actually see the added value that you can have on Tradimo. So just hit the link that I've just sent on the chat and you automatically will have a one month trial. So let's go have a look right here on the Euro US dollar. Now the euro US dollar, I I mean it's one of uh, the it is the most liquid pair. Of course, everybody trades everybody trades the euro US dollar. I don't like to trade. I mean, yeah, I mean when when I when I have a setups like this one, I do trade it, but it's not my two go pair because it moves very slowly. Some people like it because it moves very slowly, but I don't. But in any case, this is a trade that we took on the pre on the premium channel, right? I mean, price uh, was all the way down here when we when we started analyzing the euro US dollar. Let me thicken this out for you guys. When we started analyzing the euro US dollar, price was trading at this level between the one eleven ninety and the one twelve sixteen level. This area, this is what this was my bounce zone. Yeah, that's right. That's that's what I call it, my bounce zone. I mean, some uh, traders were asking me if uh, uh, it was a good idea to short uh, 
pullbacks around this level and uh, i mean i don't give financial advice i mean i just can tell you what i think about the market and the, and the, that's what i thought i thought that this move to the downside was not only uh uh done or overextended but this is was a very strong area of support and uh, what happened is that we got this and again and again it happens again and again we had rejection we had rejection right here in the lows of the of the zone and then price moved inside of this triangle and we hit buy on the breakout again and, but on this time we put the st our stops up below this low because uh uh not because I wanted to have a better risk to reward scenario, but because uh, uh, we already saw bullish action twice here, like a double bottom. And of course, if price broke with the previous lows, uh, our trade idea was invalid. But again, uh, after considering where price had bounced after such a strong move to the downside, now this is the key, guys. This is this is this is the key, right? Look at this strong move to the downside. I mean, to stop such a big move, there's more. There, there has to be a lot of buy orders that sellers cannot uh, get rid of, right? There has to be a lot of buyers to stop such a big move. And when price hit this level, buyers were positioned again to trade this market up. And this happens again and again and again. All right, now uh, I can see that you don't have any questions, and uh, this is uh, this will be this will be for me. If you want, again, if you want to, uh, let me just point out something out, right? Why do I have this blue line right here? You can all know because of that rejection to the upside, right? Big sellers coming in, big buyers. Book with the level, rejection, and then boom, catastrophic. There's <laughs> the dollar. So these levels work. All you have to do is pay attention to your charts and know where to find them. So uh, as I was saying, if you're not a premium member, just hit the link, get in. Uh, we go through charts every single day. We share, well, I mean, we share charts, trade ideas, levels of support and resistance what it, i mean uh, and uh, there's a lot of other value that you can get from me and from all the staff at tradimo so uh it was nice it was very very nice to uh, have this webinar with you guys and uh, i hope i will see you on the inside goodbye